Hello and welcome, this is S tier rank, and today I'm going to play some more inscription Casey's mod. Let's go ahead and hop in. We'll do the no hook, no clover, and pricey pelts mods, and let's see if we can get us a good team together and beat the final boss once and for all. It's been a really rough journey trying to uh, take it out with a few false starts and uh, near misses in that final fight, but let's see if we can pull it together. Okay, so we could go straight for insects, or um, maybe, why don't we go for um, pronghorns? I think that could be an interesting take too, so let's try it out. Okay, um, well I could steal the elk fawn's sigil and put it on something stronger. Um, don't need to do items, buffing something up right now isn't a huge priority, but I would get a second buff. I can't see what's back here to know what that is. Um, but I'm not sure it's worth sacrificing the elk fawn just to put its sigil on something else, because I do want to go for a specific class, so let's just go this way and buff something up instead. Hey, our elk fawn could use that health since uh, that'd make it more viable, so make it through its um, growth phase more likely. Okay. And keep moving. Alright. What do we have? Elk, stoat, squirrel, and pronghorn is coming in to attack. I guess we'll put our stoat in the line of action, but I'm afraid it'd be taken out pretty quickly. Um, we'll put it here, and it's not ideal, but we'll do it. It'll block some of the damage from the pronghorn at least. We'll save up for um, our elk here in a moment. Okay, now it's elk time. It should be able to uh, eliminate the pronghorn threat. Looks like it may have been their only card to play anyway, so I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't just... Uh... Yeah, there we go. We're going to keep going though because I like to get the excess damage bonus. So we'll play the wolf here. And we'll get the three teeth. Okay. There we go. I think that's better than uh, giving them an easy surrender. Alright, let's go this route just in case we can get some sort of valuable thing. Alright, a mantis said also has uh, the uh, sharp quills. That's cool. Maybe we'll use it on one of our deer critters. Alright, who do we want to enhance? Um, or we could make the mantis have some health. That'd be pretty nice with only one blood for its cost. So let's do that instead. Okay. Now we have a chance of it surviving for a while. Alright, porcupine and coyote. Let's see. Well, just to say, let's just get our mantis on the board and it can safely take out the coyote in the next turn. see about getting our um, stoat started over here. Alright. I think we're going to have to use an emergency squirrel. Here we are. Nice. It's kind of interesting how the uh, Porcupine's quill attack bounce off of each other. I didn't know it would do that. So that's cool. Okay, I think we're about to get some excess damage here. Just a little bit though. Okay. Nice. We'll keep moving on. I 
don't have a whole lot of teeth though. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, not even enough for a wolf pelt. So I'm just gonna withdraw for now. Alright, chose this path because we don't really need items all that bad at this phase. And we could instead boost something up, so let's do our wolf, because getting it to 4 health I think will um, give it some real staying power. I would do it with a stoat too, but it's just so weak that it's uh, a little bit hard for me to spend those resources. Alright, a wolf cub incoming. Could uh, play the stoat to stop it, that would be enough. Oh, oh yeah, in this pattern where there's a wolf behind it. Not a big problem. We're about to send out the big bad wolf against it. Here we go. Now, now I could take that or I could keep playing against you and perhaps get a little bit of excess damage, so I'm going to do that instead. So thanks, but no thanks. Ah, the elk pawn. Won't have enough time to make a big difference though, so we'll just collect a couple of teeth and keep going. Alright, I think I'll stop by the woodcarver. Alright, there's an opportunity for another elk, so let's go for it. Alright, do we have a pronghorn body? Not yet. Um, airborne isn't super special to me, so I think I'm going to go with the uh, canine head as a backup in case we don't get our um, pronghorn head. Alright, who needs a boost? How about our lovely bullfrog here? We'll save the stoat for last since it doesn't have a uh, big leap sigil. All right, first boss. Put this mantis down, get an attack on the pack mule. That would be fun. It'll survive the Cody, funny enough. So we'll do it. Nice. And um, I think we could get the stoat down in the way of the pack mule to get some more damage going. We'll leave it at that because I think that we'll be getting to the next phase. Should have just kept the mantis as it was. Okay. Let's see. I think it will just have to keep saving up some uh, squirrels. Now we can play the elk and get bloodhound. Mostly defeated. There we go. Looking good so far. Alright. Don't have enough to play our wolf yet. So let's put down smoke so that our elk doesn't get in front of the adder. Alright, now we can play our wolf. We'll have it take out the adder so that our elk can survive. And we should be winning here in a minute, in the next turn anyways. Okay, um, might as well sacrifice our elk. Well, we won't get as much excess damage, but oh well. It's kind of fun to uh, think about it 
keeping strong. I still haven't had a chance to let it get to its full strength yet. Alright, let's have a nice rare pronghorn in here. Well, amalgam counts as anything, so we'll take it. Alright. Wish we could skip Leshy's uh, phrases. Maybe there's a setting for getting past that. I'm tempted to take the Rattler just because of the bones. I need something that uses bones, so might as well. I'm always annoyed that it takes six bone, though. It's just a lot. Alright, we got a woodcarver up here, and a sigil swap. Um, what would we get with a sigil swap? What could we get? Hmm. Could take this mantis's powers and put it on something like the elk. Um, I'm always leery of ones that move, so that's a little bit rough. And the mantis is strong, so let's go with the wood carving route. We'll save our sigil swap for later, just in case we see something better. Oh, corpse eater. I guess we'll take our head for now and hopefully get a sigil soon. Okay. A bee and a bullfrog. Hmm. Sounds like a job for the elk pond to me. Okay. Nice. It's going to take out that column, so that's perfect. Oh, it doesn't get B though. That's weird that excess damage doesn't work. I guess it's because they're airborne, perhaps? Okay, so let's get this uh, other elk down, and I think that'll give us enough damage to uh, be just fine. There we go. a cuckoo. Looks like we'll have plenty of time to get our uh, wolf into the play. Here we go. Now we should get some good... well, we won't get a lot of excess damage because just enough going on get blocked. Maybe I'll get lucky and get this bullfrog down. So that should be uh, seven excess damage, I think. Almost. Maybe it's a six. Ooh, a random card. Hmm. Let's take it. Things that we've already had some things boosted here, but if I could get an elk that is four and eight by combining these two, that would be really nice. I'm trying to think of if I put the elk fawn's abilities on something else, what would that look like? Um, if it was on the amalgam, that would be a really strong amalgam. Um, it's a shame I didn't draw the mantis because I'd almost rather give it up right now. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll just do the bullfrog. It's only been boosted once and I'd rather have more pronghorns, I think. 
Let's put it sigil on somebody like... I don't know. We'll put it on an elk. I think it kind of could have went anywhere. Ooh, a stinky insect run. Hmm. You have to be strategic with that. I guess parking in the mantis would be a good idea. Or we could get the elk fawn started. And then put the mantis down after it has a chance to run around and do its deeds. There we go. Um... Even just playing it right here makes a lot of sense, I guess. Well, now it's not going to do anything. <laughs> I should have thought that one through a little bit more, but oh well. Okay. Um, let's just draw from here. Another elk. Okay. Shoot. They may win this one if I'm not careful enough. Might have to use our uh, tooth ability here in a second. Let's see. Can definitely get rid of one of the um, bees. However, it may not be enough. Well, yeah, because it's stinky. I should have done my math again. Let's see. Got two damage, but three on the board, so I'm going to have to sacrifice some, I think. And that may be just enough to make it out of here. But we'll use this guy just because we need to get rid of it anyways. Oh, Mantis is going to do a damage, so. Oh, I think we lost. Other way. Or at least it's really feeling like it. Um... Let's see. I could get the amalgam on the board. Do I need it? We'll do two and two and be even. Um, so, I guess technically I don't need it. Oh, I'm about to get a stinky bee by the look of things. I can actually get the amalgam down on the board too. And let's see what happens with the stinky bee in front of the stinky bee. We cancel each other out. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, and a beehive. Interesting. And we should be turning it around now. Good. Oh, and a mighty wolf. Let's see about... We'll take out one of the elk and we'll put it here and just get one HP of extra excess damage. There we go. Hopefully we'll make it to the uh, trapper again. I'm going to have like one or two pelts for this part. Let's get another elk. <laughs> elk are gonna rule the day or lose the day, I suppose. All right, who, sh who should we copy? Here I'm tempted to say the mantis. However, elk pond that would grow up stronger. It's pretty nice. Let's uh. Let's do the elk fawn. Feels like a little bit of a gamble, but even if it comes out one, two, that's not bad. Two, three, an improvement. Okay. And I see a woodcarver coming up too. Good, good, good. So I can go something like this. And I think be off to a good start. Four damage though. 
that's not good. Alright. May need to uh, put our stoat in front of this mantis because it's going to attack in two directions otherwise. Um, the elk will obliterate this column and then move in front of the worker ant, take its hit, and obliterate it. Um, fortunately, I think the stoat's going to die, so we'll just have to try things out. It's not looking great for me, I just don't know if I'll be able to get enough stuff on the board quickly enough. Hmm. But the elk will move in front of that column though, so it'll take that out, move over, and take those hits, and the mantis won't be at anything, so I think it may actually be okay. Just the, oh, that worker ant is going to throw us over. Just about. Okay. So let me get this um, wolf on the board and add points here. I think it, we might be okay. There we go. Ah, the ringworm. Interesting. Well, we're going to keep playing against you. Um, so. You're conceding, however, that's interesting. Why would they concede? Ah, uh, so the elk is going to take out the mantis. It's going to move over here. And then there's going to be two damage done. That's weird. Why would they concede on this? Um, you know, I really don't... I really don't see why it considers this a loss because our elk would take this out and move. We saw a worker ant here and I'm down. If I sacrifice the wolf, I just don't see why it would do that. Um, but I'll take it. I generally don't see why it would do that. I must be missing something. Hmm. Can make a really strong elk fawn. I believe that might be what I do. I'm gonna get up here to the uh, area coming up. River otter, worker ant, and grizzly. I think I'll take the grizzly for the share power. All right. Okay, have a really powerful elk or um, a strong elk fawn. I think I'd rather do that route. So it'd be three and six and grow even stronger. It only cost one blood, so. I think that'll be hard to deny its power. Okay, let's see, Dam Builder. That could be pretty great. Hmm. But finding a card may be even better, so I'm gonna go with that. I think that might be a wiser choice. The Dam Builder, I feel, is very situational and could get you into some trouble. You don't want to do that super often. Alright, angler time. Always have a tough time with it, so hopefully we'll have a better luck today. It's going to be rough with elk running around hitting bait buckets, though. I know that that's going to happen at some point, so you got to watch out for it. Well, I can't really easily get rid of the kingfisher, sadly. Hmm. Perhaps I, I could save up for the amalgam. Okay, so he's gonna pull a card, so we'll let him pull the uh, smoke over. I think that makes the most sense. Or I could have an elk that starts just rampaging through everywhere. I think that I'll do that, so... We'll save the amalgam for a little bit. And let's take out... Our... 
strong elk farm so that maybe we can take out some of the great whites that may happen to come get us. Okay. Here we go. And... Hmm. I guess elk farm is ready to go. There we go. Just being able to pick cards is sweet. Um, Mantis. Nope. Bullfrog. Alright. Fortunately, I think I'm just going to have to sacrifice a squirrel. Because he's going to pull in whatever. Depending on whether I should try to put Mantis down. Thinking about waiting until we see the relative position of things. Here we go. That grown up elk has enough power to, I think, kill a great white in one hit. Um, so I think that I'll try assisting that one by putting. The mantis over there on its side. Or I could wait until I need to deploy the amalgam because we know that one's going to get wiped out. So let's just do that. Oh, I think I just died. Wow. I did not think about the elk causing that problem. Wow, that's uh, tough. Bad news. <laughs> that. That was a miscalculation and a half. Let's give it another run. I'm not sure I was enjoying the uh, pronghorn setup as it is, so maybe I'll go after either canine or ants. Um, hmm. Let's do insects. I'll try to focus on ants and mantises, but we'll see what happens. Hey, unkillable. Perfect. Now I just need an insect head and think that we can have a really powerful setup. Alright. Put a mantis down here and it'll attack a stump and the um, bullfrog when it comes in. Here we go. Okay, time for the wolf to come in. Nice. And that's it. Okay, I don't see a lot of need for a sigil swap yet, so I'm gonna go this way and see if we can get an insect and boost up something. There we go, an ant queen. If she can have a lot of attack power and health, that would be pretty awesome. Though I could put this health on the mantis or the beehive. Actually, I think I'll do that so that I can get bees and hopefully get some um, free stuff. Hey, there we go. I, uh, it's feeling a little bit dangerous there. We succeeded. <laughs> okay, this kink. That sounds like a perfect place to park our beehive.
Okay, what do we have? An adder and save up for a mantis. Or we could go ahead. Yeah, we'll save up for it. I don't want to sacrifice a bee for it per se. Seed, but I'm, I'm not going to uh, give you the privilege. We want to get everything out here so that we can get some excess damage, bud. We'll get us a B so we can put a worker ant down and boost them. And I'll put, let's see, two, four, six damage on so we'll get, I guess, two teeth. Nope, oh, three teeth. Pretty cool. All right, I guess a cockroach is a bug, so we'll take it. All right, sigil swap. I don't think it's worth it. Um, items, not yet. We probably should use up our items soon, though. Let's go to the fire. All right, who do we want to make stronger? How about a BI with some attack power? We'll go ahead and pull back because even having one attack power is pretty nice. And let's see, I don't think I've completed my sigil yet, so I need to probably head for the wood carver. Okay. Um, I guess we could get a beehive in front of that worker ant. It's so funny to see the beehive attacking too. Okay. And we can get us a bullfrog in front of the worker ant, but it would die, so we'll do it in front of the uh, bee instead. And we'll hold a bee here to uh, block damage from happening, as well as gain a little damage on the board. Alright, and do we have enough for the cockroach? Not yet. Let's see. I guess we'll just play another bee. Okay. Bee it is. Got the bees in the trap. Nice. Okay. Cockroach, pronghorn, river snapper. I guess, let's see. We could have a really strong cockroach that we um, combine up with two and two, but. That's not really fantastic. Let's go with the river snapper. I just don't think that's going to be totally worth it. All right, we could boost something up, or I could do a sigil swap. And I'm trying to think if a sigil swap on anybody makes sense. Um, having the ant queen. I think still makes sense if we're going to go for insects so that we can generate an ant and um, keep going. So I don't think I want to go that route. I think we'll instead try to boost something else. Okay. Let's do the mantis. Pull away before we get it sacrificed. All right. Um, well, let's see. I think the river snapper would fall into the reptilian head and be unkillable, so that'd be kind of nice. But I'd really rather have that on the 
insects so we could get them all back. Um, so I guess let's go to the reptilian head since we have a bullfrog too. And then hopefully we'll get an insect head later on. I do kind of like getting it done for anybody else. That's why this is so tough. Now we have a couple of unkillables, so that's nice. Okay. Set it the mantis down. And I think that'll be our first turn. Bullfrog, and we could block some of this Kingfisher's attacks and put the smoke down to pull that one away. Alright, good. Alright, now it's time for the bait buckets. Let's see if I can do a better job of managing them. Um, we kind of need to get rid of the bullfrog so you won't activate that one. So I think that we'll do that and instead put, oops, oopsie, I can't undo that can I? Oh well, mm. that's not good, let's go ahead and pull the teeth and uh, I think it, we'll just have to roll with it from there on. Maybe I'll get just enough on the board that it won't matter. Thankfully that bullfrog was unkillable. And if we play it there, we'll get we'll get enough damage anyways. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Good, good. It's always the little mistakes that can be scary on this game, I'm telling you. Let's get the Gek. It'll be unkillable, and I can redeploy it over and over with uh, my current sigil setup. So I may actually keep that. I'll focus on having strong insects, but using the sigil, or the totem, I should say, I guess, on other parts. All right. Um, I'd like to replenish my items and attempting the cave sounds like a good idea, so let's do it. Two of Ken, um, four power, and three sigils. I don't have a lot of sigils. I don't have a lot of power, so I want to go with Ken. Maybe we'll get lucky. Alright, we got it. All right, Nelk Fawn is a burrower and gives an item, turkey vulture, that's a corpse eater. Um, that'd be nice, it just auto-play, and it makes a rabbit. An unkillable wild bull that also has fecundity. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder about stealing it for a sacrifice and using it for like say the ant queen or the mantis. I think I'll do that. Alright, we'll get us a blocker and a turn skipper. A rabbit and a coyote. And a porcupine. Sounds like the start of a joke. This mantis is so strong it could actually withstand the uh, coyote. It's just crazy. Alright, um, let's put the mantis in the rabbit's lane. And 
believe that'll be it. Good, it'll be able to take out that Cody when it comes down our way. And in the meantime, I can go ahead and take out this other Coyote using the Stoat or the Bullfrog. I'm going to play the Bullfrog first since it's unkillable. doing a great job. Alright, river snapper time. Hmm. Unless they get rid of that boulder, I'm not sure we'll be able to use it. Looks like we're gonna win pretty soon anyways. Okay. Let's see. So we're gonna... Mantis will knock these two out, and that sparrow will be the only thing over there, so... Um... We'll just go ahead and lay down the bullfrog again. Okay. There we go. Let's see. A cuckoo, a rat king, and a mystery card. I want to go with the cuckoo. Mystery cards is so hard to tell if it's going to be something good or not. Um, I've got a fair amount of teeth, so I could go up that way, and I could make my sacrifice for the wild bull stuff, so I think I'll do that. I'll at least do the sacrifice part. Oh no, it didn't give me the wild bull. That's a bunch of bull. Um, man, that stinks. What could I do instead? Maybe putting a cockroach is unkillable on the ant queen, but it's not going to let me, it may let me choose it, looks like. Heck, maybe an unkillable cuckoo. Let's just see what our options are. Hmm. We'll put it on the Gek. That's a freebie card, and if I could keep a freebie card around, that would be sweet. Because I still might swap my sigils out from um, reptiles to insects here in a minute, anyways. Okay. Let's go this way. Alright, we're in a tight position already. I guess putting the mantis in front of the sparrow makes the most sense though. And then the next turn I could put the gek in front of it. Um, I could do it now since it's unkillable anyways. And it has zero cost. And the raven's doing airborne attacks too, so... A lot of good reasons to do it that way. Alright, River Snapper. Welcome back, Gek. Time to Gek it up again. so funny watching it come back to my hand each time. Alright, let's see. We'll put... Well, I shouldn't put the squirrel down, that's for sure. We'll just go, I guess, for a minute. Something's bound to die or something. I think our mantis might just win it for us, too. Alright, there we go. We'll put the bullfrog over there. Okay. That gets us an excess tooth that we can use for trading. Um, 
Oh man, the prices went up too, I think. Alright. Well, we got a wolf pelt and a rabbit pelt out of this. Better than nothing. Alright, plus one attack. Um, we could boost up a Gek, and it's unkillable and free. Let's do it. We'll go ahead and back out, though. We don't want our card to perish. Raven and the Coyote. I guess a Mantis is the uh, solution for that. Okay. And we'll get us a Cuckoo to uh, block the lane over here. Oh no, a Raven Egg. Well, that's not good. That may have just lost me yet. It did. Oh, that's not good. Wow. That one little move. Too bad, so sad. Um, I could trade and I could maybe get a better sigil system going on here. Um, could get a pack rat. And I might have to sacrifice something. Might as well be a stoat, I guess. So let's just go this route. Okay. Hmm. Could get a very strong river snapper and combine them up. Or we could do wolf and combine it up as well. This is a hard pick. I guess we'll go with the wolf. Okay. A black goat that has bifurcated attack, no power, of course. If we could power it up, that'd be sweet. Um, porcupine that gets stronger. And then an unkillable river snapper. That'd be nice, because I could maybe swap. That'd be another one that would be unkillable and, and a reptile, and then swap it out. Let's see. And a river otter that's unkillable. We could have a lot of unkillable stuff. Hmm. And it's only one cost, too. This is a tough one. I don't think I have anything that takes bone yet, do I? Kind of hate to give it up to the bat, but having a cockroach that's four. I don't know. Bat does do more damage. Let's just get it. Kind of enjoying the having an array of unkillables here. I think that Stoat is uh, my most likely sacrifice here. Yeah. Goodbye, Stoat. You will be missed. Stoat, Stoat, Stoat. All right. Unkillable or get stronger. And pronghorn head. Hmm. I do have two unkillables on other things now. So if I do get stronger and use reptiles, that'd be a pretty big upgrade. So I think that I'm gonna go with that instead. Since I have a couple of unkillables on their own already. And the Gek is unkillable too, so um, like branded with it. All right. Wish me luck. The bullfrog is gonna get stronger pretty soon. Um, let's see. Oh, it didn't give me the smoke because I didn't have both my candles. I guess I. Forgot about that little dealio. Um, that stinks. I'm gonna go ahead and use a squirrel so that I can put the river snapper down and withstand the uh, 
the onslaught of the coyote gets coming and also it'll get stronger and hold out on its own for a while. Okay. And I think that we could also play our bullfrog too. That may be all I play if I can get away with it for um, this initial phase of things. We'll start stocking up on other cards. There we go. Good. That's not too bad to lose. We still have a wolf that can come out and take out the pack mule right away, I believe. can't play it because I need somebody to destroy some of those gold nuggets. Alright. Hey, we got a gecko we can deploy. Let's put our wolf down and uh, there we go. And I guess that that'll be it for now. We need to get that blood down con first and we can play our gek next. It'll get stronger and it's unkillable. Oh yeah, I think it, this one is in the bag, without a doubt. The Gek will be a good way to uh, clear the um, trapper's traps as well, I just realized. So it'll be a free unkillable. Gek. That's tempting, but Ouroboros is also on here, so let's get it. Because if we could get it boosted up and it grows stronger in a turn, that's like a free um, boost right away. Um, let's do the cave. Two of a kind, three sigils, and four power. Feeling a little bit better about sigils, but I think two of a kind is still my best bet. All right, got it. A bat that has rabbit hole and touch of death. That's immediately appealing, I'll say. If Kennedy with a magpie that also has sharp quills, a skunk that has many lives. And his guardian. I think I'll do that. I think I add some good reason to use the skunk. Let's see, frozen possum. That sounds like a good idea. How many teeth do I have? Not enough. Um, cave. Let's see about a sigil swap. Who would that be good with? be interesting to put this on the Gek because having the ability to sacrifice it might be a good idea. Um, or on the Ouroboros, I wonder if I could put it on it and sacrifice it multiple times to uh, do something. Like I wonder if sacrificing it actually makes it stronger. We can maybe try that in a low stakes situation. Um, let's go that route and we'll see if that works. I'm not positive it will, but we'll try. This would be pretty funny either way. Alright, Gek, you're gonna block our moose buck attack. And Bullfrog, you are gonna get on the board so you can grow stronger. Looks like he's going to be rushing me with uh, moles and moose bucks. Interesting strategy. We'll see how it works out for him. And an elk? Jeez. Guess they were hoping that they wouldn't get put on the board over there, though. 
Here we go. <laughs> I just love how the geck keeps coming back. It's like, give me more, give me more. Nice. Oh man, I think that that's going to be the key to winning this thing. Four power, five bone, and two of kin. I think it's a no-brainer to go with kin again. Oh, we got it. All right, Natter with hefty and many lives. And then Skunk that's hefty and guardian. And a Skink that's bifurcated and rabbit hole. We'll go with the Skink. Now we've got some interesting sacrifice possibilities for sigils. Um, well, I don't think any of them played out the way, way I wanted them to, though. Maybe the Mantis on the Ouroboros could get powerful. I mean, it'd take a little while, but if I got it up to three and three, it's not horrible. Hmm. I feel like it's not giving me the best sacrifice opportunities here. It's it's kind of going a little bit weak on me, I think. Let's let's see. Taking bifurcated strike on somebody might be wise. Perhaps the wolf. I do have two wolves, so if I could get them combined, that'd be very strong. We'll go for sheer strength here. So if I got bifurcated strike, that'd be 12 in one turn and had four defense. Very little would be able to stand up against that. All right, Wild Bull, which has Fecundity on it, and got a Skink with Bifurcated. I think that that one makes the most sense. We'll put it right here. Okay, and it's going to grow stronger too. We have us an Attack Rabbit now. It's also Bifurcated. Um, let's put it right here and keep it going. The Elder Rabbit has awakened. Alright. So Elder Skink is going to go bam, bam. And these ravens are going to wake up. And that's going to be a problem. Um, I don't think the frozen possum will block anything. So I still have two candles. I'm trying to think if I should sacrifice. I'm thinking I do need to sacrifice a wild bull. So it could take out this column. Or not sacrifice wild bull, but sacrifice the elder rabbit. Um, otherwise, I want to be in trouble. Here we go. That's looking better. That should be it. Sweet. Grizzly, a pronghorn, and a magpie. I don't think I... I do have a cuckoo. A grizzly is a three blood. I'm tempted to take it since I don't have any other three bloods. I don't like four bloods a lot, but having a three blood or two usually seems to be a good idea. Alright, if I go fungi, I could combine up my wolves, and I don't need a duplicate all that bad, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, a duplicate gek would be pretty sweet. They do die in one hit, so that's always rough. Um, let's go for the wolves, I guess. Famous last words. 
All right, six and four though. If this guy gets on the board, we'll be in uh, supreme good luck. All right, stinky sigil. It's always tough. All right, I have a wild bull incoming to you. So we could play our skink, and it's not going to have anywhere to run, so it should get hit and killed. Um, or we could put the beehive down in front of it too, and collect those bees for a while. I think that we should do that. And that should be all I have to really worry about right now, I think. I haven't drawn the beehive in a while. Okay, and let's uh, go ahead and draw that, and our skink um, could play, or we could put us a, uh, a bee in front of the porcupine and get a hit on it. Wild bull's gonna bully it around anyways, so um, yeah. It's airborne though, so it's not going to block anything. Um, maybe we should go ahead and get the skink on the board. Okay, and that gets us a rabbit. So we'll just keep going with it. Alright. Let's see. Stinky wild bull. I could put down the bat and get a hit on it. Um, or the rabbit would take up arms against it. However, that wild bull's gonna keep going, so let's just do this for now. And at least get a hit on it. Okay, I think we're gonna just about win anyways. Yep, we did win. Cool. Another cave event. Four blood, four power, three sigils. Let's do three sigils. Perfect. Well, an alpha that is an ant spawner. That sounds kind of nice. And a Bone King. Um, a Sparrow that has a touch of death, but I mean, it's airborne, so that's not going to help. Great White. Um, it's Sacrifice does not perish and is also a Burrower. Let's go with the Alpha. Always use more firepower on the board. Alright, he needs some health. We should do the Gek. That would be pretty funny. Um, let's see. Actually, let's do the Alpha. That way it can stay on the board, powering people up longer. Animals, I should say. Guards do talk to you, though, so they're kind of like people, right? All right. Um, I think I want to keep. Oh, I'll take the. Let's see. I think I will be taking the stinky. I mean, I do have two dogs here now. Yeah, we'll take the stinky. Um, however, I think keeping the grow stronger with the reptiles is making the most sense so far. Alright, hopefully we'll be able to use um, Gek a few times to get past the uh, annoying traps as they latch down on us. Alright, 
we'll place smoke on them, one of them for sure, to get rid of it. And we could place a Gek and the Skunk. Actually, would not die when sacrificed, so we could get us the Wild Bull out on the board too. Uh, crazy enough. So let's put this down and uh, we could go ahead and sacrifice here and the uh, wild bull can be on the board and wow we filled up the full lane in the first turn I'm not sure when the last time we did something like that was we still have cards in our hand that was an awesome turn. I haven't seen something like that happen in quite a while. Um, we'll put whatever, get whatever's here first, and we'll let the wild bull run over to the side, and the geck, meanwhile, will fall to that, and um, the skunk will just hold its position for now. Um, and I think that that's good. draw another card and we could keep we could pin our wild bull over there um, by putting a squirrel down that way it just says pure damage and I think it, we're good with that get the geck back in our hand too okay good so I think he'll give us another pelt to, if I remember right. Yep. We could trade for three things. Okay. Well, the wild bull is going to take out most of his column, but I think ultimately die to the turkey vulture. So I feel like focusing maybe over here makes the most sense. If I got rid of these three, that'd be pretty nice, just leaving us with a grizzly and a wolf to worry about. Um, perhaps getting rid of the great white and grizzly and the moose buck, just that whole back row. That'll be good. Um, we do have the geck that we can sick on a few of them. And we can almost play, actually we can play our grizzly, I think. Um, or the great white, so let's just do that and we will do this here and put our geck in the way to absorb some of the damage by being bada boom and I think that this is basically game over for them see anything else here to be concerned about so we'll just go ahead and hit continue all right perfect another gag let's do it I haven't used any of my items in a while either, so if items definitely feels like it should be avoided. I think I'm happy with our arrangement here on our woodcarver setup. Um, that really only leaves trading. I don't have any pelts in my hand, so making a sacrifice seems to be, or a sigil swap seems to be the best thing to do right now. Um, considering taking the wild bull's ability and putting it on I guess this other geck, um, that I think it'd be just about unstoppable. If I could get that. No, and it's not gonna let me have it. That's uh, really unfortunate. I don't understand why it's not giving me any of those emblazoned ones. Maybe you can only use these hard um, blazing ones, not ones that have been 
transported off. Maybe that's what is going on here. If I never did get to level up the Ouroboros, so might as well put it on this Gek, and uh, that'll be that. So here we go. Plus, it'll get stronger with the uh, um, our totem. So deep breath. I feel like this is one of the best setups I've had for this particular fight, so let's just play it slowly and think it through. Alright, an amalgam is coming in. I could have it hit on the beehive a couple times, and uh, unfortunately I think the mole man's going to get in the way of it. So, playing the Gek may make the most sense while we just kind of wait things out. Or the Beehive. Um, and, could play the Gek, but I'm afraid it'll be needed somewhere else. Um, let's just put it over here, though. Worst comes to worst, I'll use one of my blockers. I kind of want the amount to come down anyways, so we can get the B. There we go. And, fortunately, our cards are about to get solidified. Um, so, I'm thinking not doing anything may make the most sense. Um, we could play the smoke, but it's kind of a big point, I think. More amalgams coming in. They're really rushing me, aren't they? Okay. Um, mole man, an amalgam. We've got some other stuff we could do here. So this mantis is going to be useless because of that gold nugget again. Um, I could get this elder geck down and use the possum against this amalgam that's coming up. I think that makes the most sense. And we will use the Gek again to attack that amalgam. And I believe that that's it for now. Well, now well, here comes the angler. So we will need to have something else pulled up. Um, what would make the most sense? I guess the smoke. Have at it, buddy. Um, and that'll be it. Okay. It's not so much here. Let's see. I'm trying to see the scales. Can't quite tell what's over there right now. Um, we're at minus one. Why do we get that? So Malgum is going to get hit by the possum and take it out. Elder Gek is going to hit for three, and Mantis is going to hit. Um, we could get our Skink down and hitting in two directions, and it's going to grow stronger too. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. And we also have a rabbit that could grow stronger. Um, there is that amalgam that's going to approach us, though. So. I may have made a misplay here, getting ahead of myself, but let's see what happens. Alright, trading time. Hmm. How many squirrels do I have? Uh, I have a rabbit, too. Let's see. I think I may have him skip his turn. And we need to clear out these amalgams. Elder Skink will do a good amount of damage, but not fully take it out. Um, I could get, let's see, some bees on the case, or I could play this bat 
and um, you know, I could sacrifice this guy for the cuckoo and then put the geck over there and take out the amalgam. Um, unfortunately, the plotter's geek is going to bust the egg. I should have thought about that. Um, and I can't play the rabbit because there's nothing to sacrifice for it, but I think this is good enough for now. first candle by look at things. Okay. Here come the death cards. So let's start working on our power. Alright, our wolf with bifurcated strike is uh, good to go. So we could literally put it in front of our elder geck and uh, I think it'd be in an excellent situation. I even sacrifice my cuckoo for it. Um, let's put it right here, actually, so that it'll attack both lanes. I think that that's going to be perfect because that grand fur should stay in place. Um, the elder skink is going to be a little bit of a problem. However, let's see. I can my not to get rid of it. Um, in fact, I think it will. So let's put down the Ant Queen instead. And we will pause with that. Okay. Oh, I did not mean to click that. That was a whoopsie. Um, but we'll take it. Ooh, a grizzly. see how much could I put on the board here. Um, well, the wolf will take out the river snapper right away, and the ringworm will be get six damage on it. So let's put out our um, weaker geck, get it started on dying. There we go. We want it to come back stronger and stronger. Okay, it's time to attack the moon. All right. Who should we play? We have an elder geck. So, about sacrifices. If we get the Grizzly on there, that'll be more strength than uh, any of this situation. So let's put that down and um, could get the Gek back on. So let's see, we get two Geks on the board actually. The Omni Strike is going to kill, I think, just about everything, unfortunately. Um, Let's do this. Wow. I already got it down to 18 that quickly. Alright. Wild Bull with Kennedy. Um, I don't think it really matters though because I'll just be playing Gek and keep it rolling. <laughs> wow. Man. That strong wolf really did it. Jeez. That was awesome. Man, I can't believe I finally beat it. That was so, so tough. I really did not think I'd be able to do that. So, sweet. Entry number two. So I woke up and damn near lost my mind. I tried to recreate that bug with the angler over and over and nothing weird was happening. Then I realized I was testing on a different disc. So I popped in the same disc as last night, and holy shit, Meshi went 3D. 
What does that mean? I barely even know. Maybe I am crazy. The entire game is different. Unless you took over and it's 3D. I don't know anyone who would listen to me about this. Ah, new card. The Mole Man, question mark, will block an opposing creature bearing the airborne sigil. Also, an empty space will be struck. Mole Man, question mark, will move to that space to receive the strike instead. I heard that this card is something special, like it changes, I think. And a new starter deck unlocked um, with the goat. And I think it, this is, um, I forget the name of it. I can't believe I forget the name of it. And uh, a mole. Okay. In a new challenge, tip scale, start all battles with one damage on your side of the scales plus 20 challenge points. My goodness. Um, let's see. Did we get anything else in the devil line? No, oh, just a second. Interesting. Um, well, let's look at our starter decks. Maybe that would be better to have, especially having the goat. I wonder if it just asked me. Let's see. I see the check mark, but can I select it or something? It's not clear to me um, how to change it. Ah, oh, that's how we do it. Okay. So if we back out, I bet it just lets me repick it. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. So challenge level three, you have to get 30 points on the board. That's really impressive. So I could do like two of these and like tip skills and that would be enough to do it. Um, wow. We'll give it another shot um, some other time because that was a nice run and I'd like to end it on a high note of a solid win. <laughs> Thanks for watching. It's been S Tier Rank. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at S Tier Rank. I'll have a replay of today's stream on YouTube soon. Thanks. Have a good day.